It's important to select a safe storage location for your camper. Winter storms can wreak havoc and frequent inspections and quick repairs to any damage are necessary. A particularly devastating storm hit our area and even though we were protected, many trees and branches fell. We lucked out, however, and only had minor damage, which we repaired quickly. After a quick call to a tree service company, I began the process of dewinterizing the camper. Once the batteries were connected, I used dielectric grease on the battery terminals to protect them from corrosion. Once I was sure that I had power to the solar controller, then I went up to the roof. Later in the next week or two, I will go up there and actually clean the roof and inspect it closely to ensure that it is properly sealed and ready for this year. I have been up here every month just to check things checking all the skylights, anything that's going on. And now is my chance to reconnect the solar. And I will come up in a couple of days and I will wash the roof and the solar panel. We still have to clean up in here after the winter. We have been coming in and checking it out, so it does look it does look pretty good. But right now we've got power. The generator is running. I'm going to run it for a little bit. Keep the lights on. And so far, so far so good. In a couple of weeks, we'll come in and we'll we'll actually clean up and organize and dewinterize. But uh, it's been sitting here all winter. Right now we'll just let it run, get some fuel through that, let that warm up, get some of that moisture out of that engine, and it looks good. We didn't want to take a chance with any damage being uh, caused to the camper by any falling branches or trees. So we hired a tree service company to come in and take care of them for us and open it up. We'll never have to worry about this again, hopefully. propane and now I'm going to inspect the vents just to make sure that there's no critters or anything that are in there. I also need to get some vent covers which I'm going to buy today. Make sure that we've got that covered so that no uh, no critters can get in there. Start the generator. We do. For Christmas, <laughs> I, one of my gifts was I bought this, but I want it to put up here so easy access, or in here, somewhere. But somebody hasn't done that for me yet. So I'm hoping that will happen. Yeah, that probably won't happen. The snow has melted, the weather has warmed up, and we're just getting ready to dewinterize our camper. We're going to add some water. I've already tested the generator, and then we're going to replace the anode rods and get it get it ready to get on the road. 
Yeah, for the dewinterizing, what I've done is I've created a dewinterizing checklist from the owner's manual and then different tips and tricks I've learned. Uh, and then I've followed, followed the, uh, the list, ensured the batteries are fully charged, I've turned off the battery disconnect, I've done the slide outs and so forth. But I've checked this off each step along the way just to make sure I didn't forget anything. So now basically I'm going to perform the, the items that I would do or that we would do only once the weather remains above freezing. So it's, uh, well, it's the end of April, beginning of May tomorrow morning and I'm going to change the water. Uh, actually, I'm going to flush the system, get the antifreeze, the winter antifreeze out of the system, and then I'm going to sanitize the system. And open up the low point drains. And that's just the antifreeze, whatever little has been in there over the winter. Next is open up the sink faucets. I'll leave that in the middle. And once again, this blue tape is just, we put it this way, just so that when people come in here, they don't hang anything on there and turn on the faucets when we have power, or when we have the pump going, or if we're connected to city water, so it just doesn't fill up the tanks. Just double check. That is open. And never forget the toilet. So just as at a campground or utilizing city water or even household water, I do have a, uh, a pressure gauge to ensure that uh, I don't overpressure the water system inside of the, the camper. I also do have a water filter. And now what you do is you turn on the water at the spigot and run water through until the water runs clear in all the inside. There we go. Water runs clear. And now you run the water until it's clear. Both sides. Running clear. Running clear. So I will open both. Until it runs clear. So I've removed the the hose, the short section of hose, and placed it into my, my bucket of uh, bleach mixture. Um, and then I've moved from the city water connection over to the sanitization and winterizing section. Like I said, I've, I've adjusted my, my Nautilus system. Now, of course, I want to turn the power back on. And you should be able to start the pump. And that will suck the sanitization solution inside the tank. It's now sucking the sanitization fluid into the tank. Now I'm continuing to fill the tank with water. I've, uh, once I've utilized the bucket of sanitization solution, I've reconnected this directly back to my water connection and I'm filling the tank. I've got it set up the tank fill, got the pump going, so I'm watching because I've got a gauge. I've got a gauge so I can determine exactly how many gallons I'm putting into my tank. So I'm filling up the fresh water tank. Not that we need fresh water there. Now we will let this sit for three hours. Turn off the pump, it's not needed. And while we're waiting for this to sanitize, pull out the, and I've got a brand new can of water. Brand new. Might as well replace that. Difficult to do this with one hand. All set to go, ready for water. And at the same time, while I was here, I bought some vent covers so that the spring bugs don't come in, the mud wasps and so forth, and fill up the, uh, the exhaust vents for the furnace.
draining the fresh water tanks now with the sanitization water. So now I'm working on sanitizing the water system and I'm filling up with another load of fresh water. I'm going to test the uh, air conditioners. I've already got the forward air conditioner working. Second air conditioner has started up. In order to do the bypass for the water heater, or to turn it, turn the bypass back for summer use, the slide has to go out because the bypass information or the bypass access is underneath the, the counter. Slide that out. And my lovely assistant has the manual. Of course, I have everything written down in the book. So I'm changing the actual bypass. We open the cold water valve and we open up the hot water valve. Let me close the bypass. And you can go ahead and turn it back on again. And you open the pressure release so that it fills up in the tank. Okay, just like everyone else, uh, people make mistakes. I turned on the water to fill up the water heater and it gurgled and chugged and gurgled and chugged and I let off the pressure and nothing really happened for about five minutes. Well, duh, I had emptied the water tanks after I sanitized it and I hadn't put any in there. So there's no water. So now I've just got to connect it to city water, which is my house, and actually let it rip and fill up the water heater. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Perfect, and this is exactly what it should be doing when it's full. Okay, go ahead and turn the hot water on inside, and you can turn it off. All set. And the same time we have been in here and we've switched everything over and we've filled the water heater, we're making a good inspection anyway of every location just to verify that there's no rodent activity and there's nothing going on at all, and it actually looks very good, very clean. We did well. I put back together.